Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps down about 14 points right now. We got a treat. We usually talk to our man Teddy Kegstad on Wednesdays at 40 past. We have the markets closed, so he's jumped on the line with us on Friday. If you haven't checked out the Tiger Forex report, folks, Teddy puts out an outstanding report every Monday. Updates throughout the week when warranted. You can subscribe to it for $97 right under the newsletter tab. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Great information in there no matter what, even if you just keep it for 30 days. I encourage you to try it out. And then don't forget, he's got a couple of great webinars in there. Capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads in there with Teddy and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. Both of those, $97. Uh, you gain access to the archive. You get it for forever. You can watch it as many times as you need. We're coming up on the weekend. If you got some time to check it out, I encourage you to check out both those webinars. Uh, Teddy, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Got some interesting stuff to end the week with, huh? I, I You know, it seems like, Teddy, I, I guess every day is pretty interesting in this market right now, but it seems like when we talk to you, we do always have some pretty interesting action going on. Uh, we got some action in crude above $81. Boy, that yen, I talked about it hitting 159 earlier in the session. And uh, we had a little bit of central bank action this week, Bank of England, uh, Switzerland out there. And then, of course, you have the conversation about our rates with some potentially weakening numbers but as we know we're still sitting about five and a quarter five point five percent um what's what's on the top of the agenda this morning man where do you want to kick things off uh well i think we could start with crude you know um and that also will tie into as far as any type of rate uh cuts also i mean nice. you have to look at the acceleration in crude just over the past month i mean yeah. the, the gas prices never came down even though oil dropped as low as it did um here's some interesting numbers for you uh crude oil just in the past what is it in the past week is up uh, over four percent over the past month it's up just under four percent okay uh over the past three months it's up just about 0.4%, but this is where it gets crazy. In the past six months, oil is up almost 10%. Year to date, it's up over 13%. And in over the past year, uh, or, uh, in the past year, it's up over 12%. So anyway, you're looking at it, 2% uh, inflation, get out of here. You know, I mean, that target is not even remotely getting close unless those numbers really, really drop significantly. You know, I mean, we're here at, in the towards the end of the second quarter, the end of June, and with oil prices where they're at right now, I mean, get out of town. If you think you're going to see a rate cut this year, it's only because the Fed really wants to juice the market or something because there is no way that their numbers are going to be reflecting that they should do that. You know, this the crude oil where it's at right now okay is and especially because of the fact that yields haven't come back you know the where the market is is commanding them to be you know that's going to keep things at relatively high pricing you know i mean there's no way that you're going to see i mean where the only way you're going to see things come down is you have to have oversupply of everything you know where's production going to ramp up like that you know production isn't going up it's going down you know i mean if you look at the s p 500 you talk about nvidia and google and apple that's great but 56 percent of the stocks in the s p 500 are below the 50-day moving average how bullish can that be you know yeah. so and I, and I think you're going to see that with the dollar and with interest rates you know we're we're in a sideways trade you can tell the how reflectionary it is right now you know i mean yeah you do have the yen breaking out to the upside again you know that's a whole different dynamic but as, as a whole you know you don't have very much action you know everything's very sideways you know and i think that you have to look at the you know the charts are so consolidated now I and mean, if you look at the euro us dollar on a daily trade you know if if you look break it down into like 5 minute and 10 minute charts and 30 minute charts it starts to look like there's a little bit of volatility you put it up on a daily and if you look at the average true range of the of the of what market action we've had over the past couple of months there's not a lot of stuff on the table there you know i mean people who read the tiger forex report it's really hard coming out with a you know week in and week out saying hey sorry we were in a sideways environment be careful this is all you got to work with this week that's all that there is on the table when you look in retrospect uh, you know i'm not patting myself on the back for being right for calling a sideways market but guess what that's what you got to pay attention to that is where we are in right now you know and until yeah. we have anything to really sign signal that we're coming out of that uh, that's the environment we're in you got to be very cautious on that you know you have to be rational 
rational in your expectations. You know, I mean, is crude going to fly up to $100 a barrel? You know, there was a time when I was giving you numbers like that. I think we're going to press resistance. I don't think we're going up to, to $100 a barrel anytime soon, you know, but I think like we've been talking about before with crude, that 70 area, 75 area is pretty much the low bottom of support there. And this yeah. 80 to 90, 95 area is your range trade. You know, are we going to get to 100, 110? Could we have a spike? Absolutely. You know, but I don't see that really happening either right now. You know, but like I said, when I started off with this conversation about if you look at the percentages of what oil is up on the year, you know, where where are the rate cuts coming from? Where is this environment of inflation at least halting, you know, not pulling back? I mean, we need deflation. This is what we need, you know, and I don't see that on the table at all. Do you? No, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and it is. I was jumping through those charts, man. Pretty interesting. I mean, crude. And I was even going back like a year and a half ago to, to the beginning of 2023. And of course, like you mentioned, you know, we have a few spikes out of the range. But boy, between 70 and $80 for crude, um, a lot of action in between just that $10 range. And then mm -hmm. the euro US dollar as well, man. Um, you know, you got a couple of spikes, but 105 to 110 for a year and a half. Maybe the middle of last year, we made it up to 112. The beginning of this year, right. we were just above 110. But you're talking about a year and a half between 105 and 110 for the euro US dollar. Um, right. Yeah, that, that is over that period of time. And I think especially following the moves we had coming into that area, right? I mean, Correct. just mammoth Correct. moves coming into that. And then we have sure. an area of five pennies for 18 months going on and the euro US dollar. Um, yeah, that is quite right. a range trade for sure. And remember, yeah. we're coming off of, you know, first there was the COVID scandemic. Then we had the election. Now we have now we have another election coming on with the Fed in basically on pause. So we went from having these trending markets and wild volatile markets, and now they're consolidating. So they're winding the coil. Which way are they going to explode, up or down? Well, we'll see how things go. But that's the yeah. period that we're in right now. You know, it, it was, it, remember a couple of years ago, it was easy to make a lot of like long term trend calls because of the yeah. fundamentals in the market. Okay. Well, the fundamentals in the market right now are so mixed and choppy. That's why we have what's going on. And this is what I would hope the newer traders, because um, everyone wants to try and make money. And I, I appreciate a good work ethic that anyone sits down and wants to try and make money every day. But a good trader knows that you don't force a trade. If you do, you're over trading, you're going to lose money. That's it's counter It's counterproductive, you know. So and this is the kind of environment like, you know, I, you've heard me say many a times, why, you know, when I ask the question, why do I trade currencies so much? Well, currencies tend to trend 70% of the time. All other markets trend only 30% of the time at best. So you're in a sideways market in almost every single other market environment all of the time. You know, now you have yeah. the currencies in a sideways market and they're typically trends, trending markets. So you just got to deal with point, it. Man. You've had some great calls over those last couple of years. Can you hang with us for the final few minutes? Sure. Why not? Perfect. I want to ask you about the, the Swiss over there um, and maybe some other quick ones. We'll be right back with Teddy, folks. Stay tuned. We'll finish up the conversation. Welcome back, folks. we got markets pulling back a bit with the S&Ps now off about 20 points, trading at 55.24. We were, lower, were as low as 55.20. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. And, Teddy, I wanted to take, get your take on the Swiss National Bank. So I remember when, you know, years, years back, man, we talked about parity and not so much the case anymore. You got the dollar, Swiss franc at about 89 pennies, it looks like. But they come out with their second cut and... You know, what do you think about the general conversation there where, you know, their numbers, I think I saw something like GDP growth somewhere near 1%, inflation somewhere near 1%. So obviously a different environment. But for those that follow the Swiss franc, what do you think about the action over there as they're on their second cut already? Um, I, I actually don't really think very much of it. Uh, okay. I think that if if – if, if we were on the bandwagon of really, I mean, like I said, do I think we should or shouldn't raise or cut rates? That's totally irrelevant. It's the plan of what they have in place and whether they stick to it or not. And I think that because of that, because now you're talking about dueling central banks, um, if if the Fed sticks to their guns on what the premise has been for the way they've been behaving, then I would say 
as long as our numbers are not reflective because they really aren't there's we're not going to pop we're not going to cut you know so are they being ahead of us are, is there going to be like a set? Are we going to have to play catch up? I, I don't think so, you know, because you got to remember, we were the aggressive ones that started all this, you know, and yes. I, I think that instead of, you know, people ha- and the media had their have amnesia comes on before short term memory, you know, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, you know, so and I think that people are forgetting that. So the fact that they took action and even if they are going to take action again before us, they're behind us. So they're playing catch up to us. And the question is, nice. is did we maybe go too far to begin with, you know, or maybe we didn't okay. go far enough, you know. Nice. So I, I am with you on that one. That's at least that's my stance on when it comes to those things. I appreciate the take, man. And what are you thinking about gold? We got about 20 seconds. Gold at 2350. Boy, we just pulled back like $30 since we were talking to you about that's get yesterday's game. What do you think about gold right now? I, I think it's set, getting ready to set up for a range trade for the next couple of months, to be quite honest with okay. you. Nice. Yeah, it's been quite a run. That would make sense. Right. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always on a Friday, man. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Have a nice weekend, Tommy. Take care. You too. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned. Basil's up next.